to view. After a lot of whacking, there's two dowels. I can see this one, and that one broke through first. But this one on this side has been a pain in the ass, and it makes sense in a, in a way because this is the exhaust port, so this is the hottest part of the cylinder head. And uh, this will cause the um, the engine to swell. So there we go, you see. Break that bit off. And then we're now stuck on this other door. But we can wiggle that off and booyah! Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Alright then, see he's had a lot of oil um, water ingestion. So this is the head. You can see the valves and you can see the enormous amount of rust on the valves. These are toast. Oh shit. These are toast, absolute toast. Piston wise, now I didn't mention this before, but I didn't um, try to see if it would turn over and it's a good thing that I didn't and this is the reason why I don't try and turn engines over that I know nothing about, especially if I know if I'm going to pull it apart. The simple fact is that seized, that's nicely seized, so what has happened is is water has probably gotten through the spark plug hole because the actual cylinder head in here is fine. There's no water in there, there's no mayonnaise, there's no white um, horrible stuff. There's nothing like that. But in here, that is nicely fooked. And there is loads of, what's that, looks like mushy calcium deposits in the water jacket. So, that's going to be a beaut to get out. One of the biggest problems with this engine is the fact that because the um, because the uh, block, there is no cylinder. There's a cylinder head and the cylinder is actually inside the block. We have this problem of um, getting that out. And that piston is foobard and the Cylinder is probably foo bad too. I was saying that a lot of it is just. I thought this was fused, but this is the carbon on the piston crown, and this is covered in shit. Loads of carbon and the the, the rust and the carbon, etc. It's all just mixed together nicely. So that's nicely fused in there. Whoa. No, that's not wanting to go anywhere. Yes, it's all connected to the crank and all the rest of it, it's still not wanting to go anywhere. So what you can see is the rockers on these weird springs and uh, there's the cup on the top, which is pretty cool. There's a cup on the top and then the uh, rocker pad that rides on the camshaft in there. The camshaft's had a bit of gall in. Let's see if we can get you in to see that. In there. So the camshaft's had a bit of gall in, but it looks... Eh, looks alright. This one doesn't have room to move like this one does. It's a bit of a shame. I'd like to look at the other side. But nothing we can't do. We'll measure the camshaft, etc., and we'll go through the camshaft bits and pieces. Anyway, so now we've got that off. It's not like the KX 250 where I can just lift the engine and put it to one side. We're going to have to move it completely out of the way. Try and keep that clean. Put that in there like so. Our push rods. Now, there's a lot to go on about push rods and um, what do you call it? 
and all the uh, oil galleries and stuff. I'll do that in a bit. So, the cylinder head. And um, you can see nothing there, which is fantastic. So, the, the cylinder head. Get it right, you fool. There we go. So, the cylinder head. So, it comprises of all four valves, two intake, two exhaust. So, these are your intakes, because they're bigger. These are your exhausts, and they're smaller. And the reason why is because you put so much in, and then some of the mass of the material that goes in gets converted to heat. Um, well, as much as you as much as you can get can get converted to heat, and uh, so there's not as much stuff, matter, physical matter leaving as uh, there was before. Something has to reduce. You can see there, right? whacked on that tab. You can see there are whacked on that tab. But again, these three tabs, if you notice, they're beautifully splayed out to even the pressure of when you do give it a whack. Now, this head gasket is horrible. It's had far too many years. But this is the weird thing, I don't know what this is for. This pocket, it has a hole so oil can drain back out a bit. It just seems like a lot of room for nothing. Because you would think, well, it needs clearance for these um, rockers on the camshaft to go up and down and push against the uh, push rods. But this is sealed off, obviously, it has the gasket in the way. Now hopefully, no, it's not going to come off in one piece. Oh. So that's our composite gasket. So this is card, certain type of card with a metal sealing ring, etc. With an O-ring, little O-ring in there, look. That little O-ring that sits in there. And that obviously looks like an oil bypass. So we'll uh, check that out. So let's get the valves out. Let's see what state these valves are actually in. Um, but what you can see just from this is all the passages for the water. You've got your four holes for your head bolts. You have your oil return. This is the oil feed for the top. So where were we looking? Yes, I was right. So this one, this is the feed, and that's the uh, the return. And then if any of it splashes in here, you've got that little return hole that comes out here. Oops, where we're we going there. So that returns it back. So yeah, this was right where this is the feed, and that's the return. And you can tell by the deposits. So that's a bit of investigation stuff. Right, let me go and get my um, valve tool and then uh, we'll crack on and um, pop the valves and see what state the seats are in. With the amount of rust and stuff. You never know. But this is a pent roof. This is a pent roof um, combustion chamber design with a weird expansion there and there to make clearance for the valves. Uh, if you watch my four stroke um, valve introduction videos, I go on about this or what have you. But um, this is one of the best arrangements of combustion chambers that we've come with up to, uh, to date. You know, there's slight tiny little variations but it's pretty much still based on this um, pent roof four valve um, valve configuration and design of the combustion chamber with a spark plug bang on in the middle. Um, right, so let me go and get my valve tool and I'll uh, chop. Right then, so we've got the on 
valve. Bloody hell. The on valve tool. And I think I've got a problem. I think it's too big for the uh, exhaust valve, so I have to invent a way around that. So we just clamp this on. Travel. Oh, this ain't good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a better one of these. This is rubbish. So we're just pressing our spring at yon end, and then oh, there's too much shit in the way. And I've got a little pick tool. You use a magnet. Make sure it, oh, get the keepers. Don't drop them on the floor like that. So that's one. Where's the other ones on? Can't see for looking. So yeah, in America they call them keepers. In this country, in the UK, they call them, or I call them, collets. Somewhere. Anyway, so as soon as you've got the uh, keepers off, there's the other one. I like the word keepers, so we'll use keepers. So the keepers are just these tapered uh, semi circle cuffs. And then if you release the pressure on the, uh, the valve, Spring. The spring's allowed to release. Like so. So then there's our valve spring retainer. Ooh, we've got dual springs. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have one spring in there. God, they're hefty springs. We've got one spring inside another. And I'll talk about that a bit later when we go on about valve trains and um, issues. Oh god, this isn't good. That's literally seized in there. So we also have what we call an umbrella seal, which is this little oil seal here. When you take these off, always replace them. There's a valve seat as well. I don't know, valve seat, a spring seat. I'll get my fingers in, I can pull out. Oh, I can't because they've all stem seals in the way. Everything in this engine is going to be a bitch to get off, I can just tell. Anyway, we don't need to get that off just yet. What I do want to do, and make sure you can see this, is pop this valve. Let's get the old rubber army out. She's seriously seized in there. So the valve. Oh. Fucking hell. Oh. Oh. And these are the intake valves. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh no. You never know, we might be able to save these. So, that's the condition of the valve seat, which actually really isn't actually that bad. There's no real pitting. It looks like there's a good seal, which has stopped a lot of it. Um, and the seat. The seat. It's a lot of. Oh, there's a bit of pit in there. It's not too bad. 
I'm actually quite surprised. The valve guard has bits of rust down it. Oh no, that's got actually some. That's probably where it was sticking. So the valve guards look like they need replacing. Um, that's a bit of a shitter, but kind of expected. Right, so let's get the next one out. And the exhaust valves, I am um, put money on that they're the ones that are uh, having a really bad day out. set of springs and what I'm doing is is I've written on the head there which is one two etc etc get the uh, spring retainer and write the number on there because all these bits need to go if they're going to be reused need to go back together the other thing is as well is if you're not going to reuse them but you want to diagnose a problem that it may have had etc you can source everything back to where it came from which is sometimes quite important so this, again, this valve's wanting to stick. And I'm guessing it's actually the valve guides. And I'll show you some pictures. Oh, this one's looking nasty as well. See, so the valve guide, the valve stem on this one doesn't seem to have any rust. The valve um, itself, the seat looks a, yeah, still alright, to be quite honest. Put all them springs and business back together, make sure everything's in the right orientation. So the top of the spring was the top of the spring. These aren't pro progressive springs, so they don't have a an orient. Oh god. Actually I'm not gonna move that before I show you. That's this one is the, the other one. Oh <laughs> uh, now that that valve that valve seat that's pretty foo bad. That is really lovely. But we'll sandblast all this and get it all get it all cleaned up and see what we're actually left with. And um Yeah. Looks like seats might have to come out. Which is a shitter. Right, the exhaust valves. What I'll do is I'll pop them both and then I'll show you actually extracting them.